A recent survey shows bullying has become the top concern for parents as their kids head back to school. And for some, social media may be adding to the stress. There's a new app called, I hope I get this right, Saraha. And it's a, one of the top-selling new apps. It's become a social media sensation. But many are now looking at the app as a stage for cyber bullies to humiliate their victims. Joining us on the Kogo News Live line, parenting expert Harry H. Harrison Jr. And uh, Harry, did I say that right? Well, your guess is as good as mine. I thought it was Sarah Ha. Sarah Ha. <laughs> That's a goodie. <laughs> Sarah Ha. Well, whatever Sarah it is. Sarah Ha is just as good. Yeah, whatever it is, it doesn't sound good. Explain how this works. Well, this, this thing started in Arabia by a businessman who wanted his employees to tell him anonymously what it was right and wrong about his company. It has somehow gravitated over to the United States as an app, and it's a, supposedly it's a correction app. Uh, your, your friends, quote friends, can anonymously tell you what's wrong with you uh, or, or what's good about you. I mean, you're, they will supposedly send you the text, you're a nice person, or they'll send you a text about, you know, you're a horrible person, you should die at 9 o'clock tonight. And that's the problem is that kids are being bullied on it. And uh, uh, the, the thing I find amazing is that parents are allowing this app to be on their, on their children's phones and on the children's computers. This is, this, is, this is an easily solvable problem. You just take that app off. And get rid of it. Well, do they even know what it is? I mean, because we don't even, I, I've never heard of it. Nobody in the newsroom had heard of it. Um, would parents really know what, what this is? Well, that is a fine question. And if they don't, why not? Why aren't they looking at their children's phones and going, what is this app? What is this app? What is this app? And finding out about it. This is just, we either have involved parenting or disinvolved, uninvolved parenting. And an uninvolved parent, you know, will never pick up the, the phone. And we'll never go through it and, and look and see what uh, their kids are downloading, look and see what apps are hitting. Uh, an involved parent will. An involved parent will go, no, 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 this app isn't good for you. We're not going to do that. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that either. Okay, we're going to do this. Um, just because you hand your son or daughter a phone doesn't mean you relinquish all parenting responsibilities. Uh, and I think some people have. And so consequently, uh, some kids are being um, being bullied on this that, that – if their parents had stepped in earlier, they would never even known they're being bullied. <laughs> so they wouldn't have gotten the text or the messages. Well, now let me ask you this, and this is a tough question, though, Harry. Why, why are kids, why do they tend to be so cruel on social media? And let me say, it's not just kids, it's, it's adults, too. So why are people so cruel to other people on social media? You know, we will type things and write things. Uh, and message things to people, they would never in a million years save their face, ever. We would never say the things uh, to people to the face that we say on social media. We call people names. We just dress them down. We, 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 and, and on social media, in person, we don't do that. In person, we, you know, we're not trying to start a fight. We're, uh, we may disagree, but we respectfully disagree in person. But, oh, my gosh, you put this in the hands of, of someone mad and, and they're, they're mad at their employer, they hate uh, uh, another girl, or they hate a guy, and uh, um, they just say terrible things uh, and, and don't mind typing out and don't mind pushing send. That, that, like I said, they would never say in person. And this kind of points to uh, a problem in society and that we're becoming a society that sends cruel things, that says cruel things over the Internet, over text, over email, without, without dealing with it in person where it wouldn't be as cruel, it wouldn't be as mean. Uh, we're losing the ability to, to just socialize uh, instead, of, uh, in, in, instead of using text messages and emails. And what's the... That, well, what's the best way to deal with bullying since kids are going back to school? Well, the best way is bully-proof your kid. And that's someone, a child that is bully-proof, that's had parents that raise him, that uh, he knows home is safe. They've given him um, a sense of, of, of grit, of how to, how to stomp through storms and still come out ahead. They've, they, uh, he knows he's loved. He knows that uh, uh, he's, he's been given a, a safe base. He's, he has struggled and succeeded. And a bully to him means nothing. To someone who's lonely, who has stayed at home, who, whose parents have given him everything. A, a kid, it's very hard to bully a kid who's had to fight for everything in his life. And I don't mean literally fight, but I mean has had to struggle. And parents will, will not let their kids struggle. But the kids that struggle, they can stand up to a bully. The kids that struggle and win, they can stand up to a bully. If you're handing your daughter everything, handing your son everything, they don't know how to react to a bully. They take it bad. They, they become more of a victim. So we need to be raising kids that are victims, and uh, uh, bullying is going to happen, but we can raise kids who stand up to bullies.
All right, Harry, we are out of time. We'll end on that. Thank you for the advice. Harry H. Harrison Jr. is a parenting expert joining us on the Kogo News Live Line.